I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's lift up our hands and bless Him. Father, we bless you. Lift your hands inside and outside, and let's bless the King. I have confidence in Jesus. I have confidence in you. Anytime, any day, I have confidence in you. Savior, I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence.
and I gladly bow. I gladly bow my knee just to worship. God's idea that in every territory there be apostolic and prophetic voices that coordinate the spiritual growth of a people within a territory. It is not God's desire that there be a barrenness of apostolic and prophetic voices that can build and equip people. Hallelujah. So God's system of kingdom advancement is territorial, such that in every territory, there must be representatives. The way the Bible will say, the church in Ephesus, the church in Philippi, the church in Corinth, there must be a church, a body of believers, a spiritual institution 
that is responsible for the upbringing and the maturing of the saints. Hallelujah. And we are glad and privileged that God has made this ministry and this platform an opportunity and an access point, a portal with which he will speak to this territory and by extension across the nations. We just returned from Abel Kuta this evening. It was an awesome time. The hand of God was strong upon that place and you cannot imagine how the teachings have set that territory on fire. We bless God for what he's done. Hallelujah. It's good to be back home. I miss some of you. Some. Some of you, I didn't miss you at all. Praise the Lord. Tonight is a communion service. So, um, we'll be having the communion later on. But I want to, I want to share with us something very powerful tonight. God is opening us up to the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom represent the secret codes of operation. Please listen. Please listen. When we talk of a mystery, I know that I've said it again and again, but I want you to write it down. A mystery is a secret code of operation. A mystery is a secret code of operation. It is a hidden strategy. A hidden strategy. Usually spiritual. A hidden strategy that guarantees a predictable outcome. Please make sure you're writing. A hidden strategy, usually spiritual, that guarantees a predictable outcome. One of the ways that God designed the church to rise in dominion, listen, one of the ways that in his infinite wisdom, he designed that the church will walk in dominion is to grant them access to the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew chapter 13 verse 11 says it has been given to you the church the ecclesia it has been given to you to know the word know there is not to be aware it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom everyone say it has been given to me say it it has been given to me to know, to understand, to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The same way you see a husband and a wife, please look up, a husband and a wife, and when a visitor is in their house, they have secret codes of communication. For instance, the man has a secret way he tells his wife, go and get the wine and bring for the visitor whereas the visitor does not know that a conversation is flying around him it's called a mystery there are mysteries in the kingdom that culminate into dominion the concept of dominion and kingdom authority is not an issue of chance it's not an issue of wish it's not an issue of begging it's an issue of contending to understand the mysteries the secret codes of operation. Witchcraft, for instance, thrives on mysteries. Hallelujah. It's a mystery, brothers and sisters, when a herbalist invokes the name of a man in a calabash, right, and brings a picture of that person, whereas the man is in town doing something else, and then they pick up a knife or whatever it is and strike the picture, and then as far as they are concerned the man is dead is that true whereas in the physical the man is making his own plans i should travel i should do this and that and he becomes an eventual victim 
of something that had been engaged. In the book of Job, the Bible tells us how that a man called Job was a great man. He loved God and he eschewed evil. And then the Bible says one day there was a meeting. Watch this. There was a meeting in the heavenlies. And Job became the subject of discussion. While that was happening, did you know that Job was not aware? He was in the earth. Only for him to be a victim of the conclusion of a meeting that has happened somewhere. And so when believers are equipped, please listen. When believers are equipped, the Bible tells us that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. A symbol of authority and a symbol of dominion. Life becomes predictable when you understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Life becomes predictable. Success becomes guaranteed. The, the pathway of destiny becomes predictable. Only when you understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's see how we can get more people in, even if it's just to squeeze standing, please. Can we do that? Let's see how we can get, occupy all these seats. Please take the empty seats. There's no reason why there should be people standing there. Just squeeze them as, as much as possible. We really apologize. This venue is already small. Um, so let's have them do that in one or two minutes. If they can, that's all right. If they cannot, it's okay. Just, just squeeze around. Look for it, please. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. says that these things have been hidden from the princes of this world so that no matter the level of a man's education no matter the level of physical and sociological orientation the bible tells us that it takes the spirit of god for a man to access the mysteries of the kingdom age will not reveal mysteries Education cannot reveal mysteries. Social status cannot reveal mysteries. Orientation cannot reveal mysteries. Elihu said in chapter 32 verse 8, he says, but there is a spirit in man. 
there is an agency of the Holy Ghost at work in a man that can bring illumination to your spirit man and make men of understanding. It's not a scientific formula. It's not something you calculate mathematically. It's not something that you, you bring up like a chemical equation. It's an activity of the spirit. Mysterious, yet it can be understood. And one of the deep mysteries of the kingdom is what I want to share with us tonight. I consider what I'm about to share with us a part of the foundational mysteries that should be taught the church. That when someone gets born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, as we are teaching them the rudiments of faith and etc., this mystery I'm about to reveal to us is an ancient secret. Many people have understood um, that it brings blessings, but they have not been taught the dynamics of its operation. Help us tonight, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Write this word down. The blessing. The blessing. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26, Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, and Elohim, the Hebrew word here is Elohim, is in plural. The singular is Eloha. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, watch this, this is the mandate. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and um over all the cattle, the earth, and every creeping thing. Watch this. This was God's idea in the creation of man. That let us make man in such a way that every element of creation can respond to them the same way it responds to us. The cattle, the earth, the waters, the wind. Let us create them with a spiritual equipping that makes creation to respond to man. In the same way he would have responded to God. And then, this was a strategy, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created them. Read 28, the first four words. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. The Bible says, and God blessed them. I know that we've heard about blessings. To us, blessings just means to proclaim goodwill to someone. Or to, to, to bring in the supernatural to partner with the person. No, 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 no. no. The first time we see the word blessed being used in the Bible. And God, in order to fulfill that mandate of making creation respond to man something needed to come upon man there was an ability upon man that will make creation begin to respond to him in the exact same way he would have responded to God and the Bible says and God blessed them. he released a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit upon man and at once watch this the moment that anointing that ability came upon man at once, creation started obeying him. Please listen. The earth started obeying him. The cattle, the Bible says that he brought the animals together so that he would name them. No animal fought man. No tree produced thorns and thistles for man because there was something upon him. Please listen. Let them have dominion, not by fighting, not by trying to lobby their way that something will come upon them that will empower them to use words because this is a sound planet 
is a planet that revolves around words. And then he says, and God blessed them. And this is what he said would happen on account of the blessing. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. I give you an ability to bring things again even when they die. And then he says, subdue. And he says, have dominion. Please watch this. So we see that there was a mysterious spiritual factor in the creation of man that made plants and animals and situations and circumstances respond to him. It was not an issue of luck. It was not an issue of age. It was not an issue of gender. There was a mystery. A secret code of operation. And with it, Adam began to do mighty things. Watch this. When man fell, certain things happened. Man lost this mysterious spiritual enablement. And at once, creation started fighting man. Watch this. Creation no longer respected man again. The animals, the plants. God never cursed man. He cursed the earth. Do you know what it means? In other words, he cut that flow of obedience from the earth towards man. The same way it would have happened to him. Are you getting the point now? So man would no longer speak to the earth and say produce. And then it would produce. And everything that came out of the earth and the waters began to disobey and fight man because something was lost. Man's life from that point became scientific. Man's life from that point became an issue of chance. Man's life from that point became an issue of experimentation. Man's life from that point became an issue of guessing. Every time God wanted to make creation obey man. Even if it was temporarily, he, through his words, restored momentarily that very factor. That's how Noah brought all the animals to the ark. The Bible tells us that he was instructed to build an ark and that the ark would be of gopher wood. No other wood would do. So an ability came upon Noah to speak to the earth that only gopher wood will grow sufficient to be able to build the ark and Noah stood and called the animals and they started coming two by two seven by seven no rebellion and all through the period of the flood there was decorum in the ark because the blessing was at work are you getting what I'm saying please I want you to pay attention because this will change your life forever hallelujah this is exactly what happened to Daniel in the den of lions when the angel appeared the lions were not afraid of the angel the moment something happened it suddenly became like the garden of Eden and the lions calmed down no need for agitation no need for fighting creation under the feet of man circumstances under the feet of man because of an ability that is resident within him now watch this when God called Abraham I needed to get this very easily God called Abraham and said Abraham come I am going to make you the father of nations I am going to literally make you the landlord of the earth and anybody who is connected to you I'm going to do something to you Abraham that will make the earth obey you I will do something to you that will make you become um, like the, the originator of this spiritual civilization. And watch this. When he told Abraham, Abraham was a weak man, an idol worshiper who lived in a place called Ur of the Chaldeans. And then he says, come out of your father's house and out of your kindred and all of that to a land that I will show you. Are you getting what I'm saying? As at the time he spoke to Abraham in chapter 12 of Genesis, he said, I will. Let's go to Genesis 12 from verse 1 and then 2. It had not yet happened in his life. He was telling him what will happen. 
It says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of your country, from your kindred and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Verse 2. Read everyone. One to read. Stop. Watch this. Look at what he's telling Noah. I mean Abraham. He's saying, Abraham, I want to do all of these things to you. I will make you a nation. How will one man become a nation? Then he says, I will bless you. He says, I will make your name great. He says, you shall be a blessing. Verse 3. Read everyone. Want to read. Watch. Stop that. Let me explain something to you. Do you know the meaning of this? In other words, for any man to be blessed, he must bless you. Listen, listen, listen. This is a deep spiritual mystery. I will make you an epitome of blessing such that men can tap into your blessing by blessing you the more. That every time they bless you, they are authorized to receive what is upon you. Are you getting what I'm sharing now? now and then it says, I will curse him that curse you. This is a dangerous statement. And then it says, in thee. That means the goal is not for this substance to remain on you alone. The goal is that through you, the entire creation like I intended in the Garden of Eden will now walk in this factor called the blessing. And they having the blessing will bring creation once again under subjection. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you understand me so far? This was God's proposal. As at this time, it had not happened yet. It was a proposal he was making. Like you call a man and say, follow me. There are benefits. I will pay you 100,000 and I will give you weekends. So God was giving him his proposal. Watch this. A lot of us talk so much about Abraham and how that Abraham became great. But I want to show you something very interesting that happened to him. Chapter 14, please. Open our eyes. 14 verse 17. Genesis 14 verse 17. Please let's hurry up. The Bible says, and watch this. This was when they went to, Abraham went to fight and recover Lot and all the things that they had stolen. It says, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of um, all that long name and of the kings that were there with him at the valley of Shaveh which is the king's dale watch this 18 now we see a mysterious figure please listen the first time we see the appearance of this man no history he says and Melchizedek who was the king of an ancient city of peace called Salem brought forth bread and wine watch this the bible says and he was the priest of who the most high god let's see his encounter with abraham next verse he says abraham he blessed him okay let's look at 20 and then we'll come back to verse 19 so that we we'll understand it in context he said and blessed be the most high God which had delivered thy enemies to your hands and what happened the Bible says and he gave Abraham gave Melchizedek what tithes of all watch this so this is the interaction that happened Abraham meets this strange man called Melchizedek and he takes the tithe a tenth portion of the spoils and then he gives to Melchizedek. And then Melchizedek pronounces a blessing. Let's go back to verse 19. And this is the blessing. He says, and he blessed him. Are you seeing now? The same way God blessed Adam. He says, and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham of the most high God. How can I, a man bless a fellow man with this kind of blessing? He said, you will be the possessor of both the heavens and the earth that means everything from the heavens down to the earth is your possession 
this is a very strange activation you can only bless men because such as you have you give who is this strange guy called Melchizedek that can bless a man and say from the atmosphere and the heavenlies let everything be subject to you and from that time watch this Abraham mysteriously began to be rich in cattle and, 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 and land and all of that and not only that from him came Isaac and not only him he became the father what we call the father of faith from this one encounter hallelujah now turn with me to Genesis chapter 2 so we see that the only interaction watch this the only interaction between Abraham and Melchizedek is tithe that's the only thing that brought them together tithe not a long story not discussions not conversations tithe Genesis chapter 2 Verse 15. Genesis 2, verse 15. Parabosa secret. And the Lord God took the man, talking about Adam now and put him into Eden to dress it and to keep it verse 16 he gave him an instruction and the Lord commanded the man watch this please pay attention he says of every tree of the garden you can freely eat I give you access in the kingdom you don't own things you only have access anytime you are an owner in the kingdom it will bring worry it will bring stress the reason why high blood pressure is killing many people is because they are the owners of what they have in the kingdom you are only given access not ownership the prodigal son had access but he wanted ownership the moment ownership started lack and limitation started in his life until he returned back to access are you getting blessed now praise the lord so the bible says of every tree you may freely eat next next verse please 17 but of the tree watch this but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shall not eat he says for in the day that you eat thereof you will surely die now watch the instruction i give you every tree but there is one that I kept in the garden. That is the tithe of that garden. And it says do not touch it. You can access every other tree. But I put a restriction on this one. Leave it to me. He said the moment you touch this one. You engage something in the spirit that you may not know. That will have to force you out of this place of abundance. Are you getting the point now? For as long as man honored God with the tithe. And did not touch God's designated portion, we call it. A portion that has been designated for God. The Bible says, man kept having, paraphrasing now, abundance of supplies and creation remains subject to him. Are you seeing that this is not just about abundance? This is about dominion. This is not just about abundance. This is about dominion. Our theology of typing is tied to just money wrong tithe is an ancient mystery of dominion watch this the bible says your dominion is at the mercy of many mysteries including that of the tithe and then watch what satan does he comes to man aware of god's principles and then he makes man to touch the tithe god's portion as soon as that happened man lost dominion he went out of the garden of eden the garden of the lord and all of that began to happen in his life suffering hardship creation no longer respected him so when melchizedek came to abraham this is what he was telling abraham in effect abraham 
nothing will respond to you and that prophecy that God wants to bring to you will remain inactive you will have to activate this operation and the way you do it is to bring God's portion as a symbol of honor and a recognition watch this the moment Abraham did that like Adam like Noah creation started responding to him we see dominion at work in Abraham's life are you getting blessed now now watch the subject of tithing in the church has been erroneously taught or taught in an incomplete way we have taught tithing to be that um, it is the way of running away from trouble or it is the way of bringing financial supplies to a church and so many believers have not been taught that part of the ordinances that establish their dominion within a territory part of the spiritual laws that make both animate and inanimate things to respond to you as though you were living in the garden of eden is to bring before god the portion watch this no man can bless himself it is against the law no man can bless himself it is not given to you to bless yourself The tithe. Write that word down. What is your tithe? Your tithe is a tenth portion. One tenth. Your tithe is a tenth portion. One tenth of your increase. A tenth portion of your increase. Required by God. Write it down required by God as part of the spiritual mysteries that activates the operation of the blessing upon your life your tithe is a tenth portion of your increase required by God that activates the operation of what the Bible calls the blessing upon your life What exactly is this blessing? Let's talk about it in one moment. In the New Testament, we know that the blessing is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit. It's a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that empowers you for dominion. It, it works in a way um, that authorizes creation to respond to you. Please pay attention. This is what we call good luck. This is what we call good luck. Have you seen human beings who it looks like no matter what happens in their lives, they are always at the point of advantage. Everything seems to happen well for them. We say they are lucky or we say they are fortunate. They are the ones men want to sow into. They are the ones people want to bless. When a situation happens like a, like a, like chance, the chance still lands on them. It's not a mistake. There is an operation of an ancient spiritual mystery upon their lives. Your gathering today is not just chance. It's a direct operation of an ancient spiritual mystery that will work for anybody who knows how to activate its operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very important. So the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says how that you should bring, it says, um, all the tithes of the land, all of the tithes in the book of Leviticus, he said it belongs to the Lord. So the tithe is not just what you give God. The tithe is his portion in everything he gives you. The tithe is God's portion, untouchable. It is not something you do 
when you have money it is one of the keys to commanding creation to submit to you please i want you to please for god's sake pay attention don't miss what i'm sharing with you you will rise out from where you are to a dimension you never dreamt of if you pay attention to what i'm sharing every door in the spirit can be opened when you have the keys that it refused to open for you does not mean it cannot be opened hallelujah is god speaking to us now so you see that there is a relationship between the tithe the blessing and dominion everybody say the tithe everybody say the blessing everybody say dominion i've defined the tithe god's portion let's write down the blessing let me talk about it a bit what exactly is the blessing and how does it operate in the life of a man the blessing the blessing is an operation of the holy spirit if you want you can call it an anointing it's a dimension of the operation of god that activates dominion upon the life of a man that activates dominion that means the authorization to rule and reign over creation the authorization to rule and reign over situations and circumstances the authorization to make creation listen to you the exact same way it would have listened to the Christ are you seeing why the devil fights time because he knows watch this that there is a relationship between your tithe there is a relationship between it and the blessing and then there is a relationship between the blessing and your dominion how many believers think they are doing God a favor when they tithe now in ancient times um, your tithe represented any increase in your value whether cattle whether sheep um, whether land whatever it is but in our contemporary society today because your money your notes now represents is the representation of the value that you have so your tithe becomes monetary but according to god's original design it's not just about money are you seeing why it deceives a lot of people because we think that tithe is about money naira now no tithe is about god's portion whatever it is that he has given you there is a portion for himself as a symbol watch this as a symbol of your acknowledgement that he is the provider two as a symbol of your honor to him number three as a connection to the continuity of that manifestation in your life let me tell you what happens when a man does not tithe do you know what happens when you do not tithe the earth was caused by God watch this the cause that God gave the earth is not the cause of the law so the coming of Christ did not take away that cause that cause what Christ came to annul was the cause that came with the law the cause upon the earth is still intact the earth there is symbolic it does not just mean crown alone it means creation you cannot avert the cause that is upon creation it's called the bondage of corruption you can only exempt yourself and the way you exempt yourself from its effect is tithing bringing back god's designated portion that every time you are not tithing the earth is authorized to treat you like the fallen man this is terrible and so you find out that all kinds of woes happen to people it was malachi the prophet who arranged it together to give us some level of spiritual intelligence before malachi we did not have the understanding that abc will happen when we tithe and abc will not happen when we do not tithe the curse is inevitable upon any life any church any organization that fails to tithe 
out of revelation and understanding this is the predicament of many of us sitting down right now looking at me it's not about lack it's not about lack it's about creation refusing to respond to you are you, are you getting the point now so your dominion is thwarted completely when God's portion is not returned to him hallelujah are you getting the point now this was what Melchizedek was teaching Abraham Abraham forget about dominion when you are still holding God's portion you cannot activate the operation of the blessing upon your life and then he says this and Abraham blessed him with all of the tithes and then a pronouncement was made upon his life that turned around his destiny let's go to Malachi chapter 3 please by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches Malachi please chapter 3 let's begin our reading from verse 8 and let's hear what the prophet has to tell us Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 everyone read the first five words one two read answer it the answer is personal that's what God is asking you will a man rob God ah how does the prophet start talking about robbery now? Will a man, will a church rob God? Will an organization rob God? It's a question. And then he says, yet. Because your answer would have been no. And he says, yet ye have robbed me. So, the prophet is speaking on behalf of heaven. And he's talking about the issue of stealing and robbery here. It says, but ye say, wherein have we robbed you? And he said, in what? In tithes and offering. That means you have violated a principle. Next verse, as a result. Read it. Watch this. It says, as a result of robbing me, as a result of keeping back the portion, that activates the operation of the blessing and compels creation to hear you and respond to you enforcing your dominion it says you are cursed not that God is saying I curse you he's saying inevitably you now become the victim of situations and circumstances because the principle of exemption has been violated are you getting what I'm saying now and then he says, for you have robbed me, even this whole, a nation can rob God. A church can rob God. A business can rob God. An organization can rob God. He says, whoever you are, if you do not engage in this mystery of exemption and dominion, inevitably, the cause of creation will catch up with you. It's not if, it's when it will catch up. Then it gives you a remedy. Next verse. Bring ye how many? He's telling you now. The prophet Malachi is teaching us how to get back into the, the mysterious secret of exemption that brings us into the blessing and brings us ultimately into dominion. He says, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now here with say the Lord of hosts if I will not these are the blessings now that will happen to you number one is what the heavens will be open write it down the first key that the prophet shows us that will happen to a man that dares to return God's portion is that you walk under an open heavens the heavens are closed over many people. The heavens are closed over many churches. You can produce posters and handbills and do everything you know to do. When the heavens are closed, it becomes obvious to men. 
there are many people binding all kinds of demons and the demons keep mocking you because the moment you are walking in rebellion they are authorized to find expression they are called rulers of darkness their dominion is activated whenever there is darkness are you getting what I'm saying now this is not about money this is about the quality of your existence this is about dominion this is about activating the blessing that anointing that that grace that agency of the spirit upon your life number two he says and I will pour you out a blessing now this is this is amazing a blessing it says that there will not be room enough to receive it meaning I will pour you a blessing that your lifetime cannot exhaust it your very lifetime you will have to necessarily transfer it to your children and children's children watch this this principle of tithing is the surest way to guarantee the future of your children and your children's children anytime you fail to tithe you just stole from their future and rob them every time you fail to tithe you sign a covenant of poverty a covenant with your children and children's children authorizing creation to fight them you will not have room enough to contain it you will have to transfer it so the bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children according to the order of the blessings of fatherhood and tithing it should extend to the fourth generation that means if you tithe, you secure your generation to the fourth. If your children tithe, they secure their generation. It's God's system of maintaining dominion upon the earth. Are you getting blessed now? How many of you are already signing poverty and signing hardship for your unborn children? This is what many of our parents did to us. And so you get up and you find out that creation fights you. Everywhere you go, everything is fighting you. You call it bad luck. Everything fights you. Everything fights you. Opportunities come and go. Nothing seems to work well. God's designated portion. Let me tell you something about the operation of demon spirits. Do you know why many people keep going through deliverance again and again and again and it does not happen because it's not just by casting we're talking of legal grounds here are you getting me now when a demon comes to manipulate an entity or an individual illegally you can cast that person just by the name of jesus are you getting what i'm saying but when you willfully authorize the operations of demons there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will cast it away the only key that can speak is the blood of Jesus that is the situation that he said they overcame them these kinds of cases it's not just by saying go out no they overcame them why because when you invoke the blood he comes in as your substitute that becomes the only remedy of him giving you a chance to start again how many believers have disgraced and mocked themselves running around from one deliverance house to another my job is not working i need promotion let me tell you when creation fights you you are a loser for life i guarantee you i don't care what opportunities open i don't care what comes to you when the creation does not submit to you everything will work against you your children always become the dullest. When rain is washing houses, you are the one that it will wash your house. When anything bad is happening, I say, ah, why is bad luck happening to me? Bad luck is not happening to you. Creation is engaging the cause that you refuse to exempt yourself out of. See, Job knew this. Job, Job knew this. That was why he was so he was so passionate about tithes and offerings to an extent that when his children were not even doing anything wrong he would do it in advance for them 
that's how the fortune of job was restored it's a mystery you would think that a man who had gone to the lowest point in his life would never be able to rise again but by the mystery a man called jc penny many of you know him a christian businessman he began to practice tithing and supernaturally god started opening opportunities for him and he rose to a, a point where his organization you would call it too big to fail and he said look i cannot be tithing hundreds of millions of dollars i mean it, it's, it's too much and he stopped and everything was died and he came back to the scratch let me tell you don't play with spiritual laws they are older than you when you play with spiritual laws it's like playing with fire whether you believe it or not it will tear you into pieces and leave you there there are people who have found peace with creation it's like how elders do this they call it appeasing the gods so they pour small wine on the ground they say this is for the gods or i take your own and leave us in peace and it seemed to work for them creation fights non-titers write it down creation fights non-titers creation fights non-titers the curse of creation fights non-titers your spiritual exemption from the curse that is upon creation is bringing God's designated portion and bringing it with joy and bringing it with understanding hallelujah the Bible says verse 11 and I will what rebuke the devourer the only place in scripture where God tells you just calm down I will take care of the devourer do you know who the devourer is the devourer is a spirit the devourer is a spirit he is the one who is an envoy of the curse upon creation the devourer causes loss the devourer causes death the devourer causes mishap the devourer causes misfortunes this is the ministry of the devourer whenever the curse is ready to catch up with you the devourer comes mysterious accidents mysterious failures inexplainable setbacks circles of misfortune the curse of creation is catching up with a man how many rich people are living as if they are not working they thought the, the secret is promotion then they got a job and it has not changed you buy a new car somebody just goes out to test the car and returns back with two tires because the car is scattered into nonsense the moment they pay your arrears five million you fall sick your wife falls sick the children fall sick they keep treating them when the money finishes they are healed by themselves the devourer the devourer are you getting what i'm saying you enter the exam hall and then you blank out and you come out you are conducting tutorials for others but you yourself will not be able to excel it's not just fasting it's not just prayer it's not just deliverance in terms of casting out demons i tell you the truth see listen listen to me you know why there are many people before you lay hands on them the demons fly out they just went for retreat as soon as one day just say yeah, let's stroll out and allow this this guy to just roam around and waste his time because they know that they have been authorized see you cannot destroy principalities you can only dominate them that's why the bible says christ is the head even christ recognizes the presence of principalities are you blessed please it says and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground your ground is anywhere you plant it could be your job 
it could be whatever it is that you are doing it says neither shall you find cast her fruit before her time saith the lord of hosts and then verse 12 the last verse says all nations shall call you blessed and it says for ye shall become a delightsome land the word delightsome is the word well favored is the word fortunate fortunate well favored right fortunate so if i walk to this brother and say brother take 10 naira and he collects people say ah you are lucky no you are not lucky and then he goes outside and another person says are you so 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 and so please come i have something for you say kai bros you are lucky oh no you are not lucky you are at peace with creation there is a mysterious supernatural anointing upon you a church that does not tight i guarantee you in the name of the lord they will struggle forget about dominion whether financially or everything i know churches that threaten their members if you leave my church i will curse you better come and add to the numbers and they say people come and receive miracles and go and they move all around they are always broke they are always begging things are always not happening creation does not have any respect whether it's koinonia or whatever god himself spoke a curse who will revert the curse listen while you are seated or standing looking at me this is a key to supernatural exemption from the vicissitudes of life you want to survive in the nigeria of today please exempt yourself from the nonsense that is killing people look at how high blood pressure is destroying people because creation has refused to obey them money come to me now say are you joking does it happen just like that it only happens the creation will only hear your voice when God's portion is returned to him and so there are people watch this there are people that get up in the morning brothers and sisters before evening there are untold blessings upon their lives people go out of their way to favor them a lady is moving around you may think she's not as fine but you see all the brothers who are praying for pursue her and they say we are not embarrassed ah there is an ointment ask esther there is an ointment it does not just happen it's a distinguishing anointing it's an ability of the spirit that causes things to the best way i can use it i can describe it is fortune or good luck nothing just happens there are no customers coming in my shop. I, I don't know. Let's paint the place green. You play, you can paint it green, paint it red, paint it white, paint it blue. If you are a robber, creation fights you. The very soil upon which your shop is laid upon will fight you. Who is God speaking to? How many of our parents have refused to tithe? They have been working since they were 20 years many of them are old right now but there is nothing about their lives that show for it please let me tell you something pay attention to this don't fight the bible you will be a victim of it now watch this how does tithing relate to the blessing in the new testament besides let me tell you something Tithing is not an Old Testament concept. It never came with the law. When the law was fulfilled and abolished, it was never part of it. Tithing is still relevant in the New Testament. Watch this. I want to share with you a very powerful mystery on how you activate the operation of the blessing in your life. Hebrews chapter 5. Adonai Adonai, Adonai, you reign on earth. Help me. In your name, we will rise. Adonai, you reign on earth. Watch this. The 
Bible in Hebrews chapter 5 begins to give us the high priestly ministry of Jesus. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 5 reveals Jesus now as our high priest. Are you getting the point now? The high priest of the church. Not just the second Adam alone. Not just the apostle of our faith. But the high priest. And then he starts by saying, For every high priest, verse 1, taken from among men, is ordained for men in the things pertaining to God, that they may both offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. Now go to verse 5. Go to verse 5. We we'll read down to verse 7. It says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. Watch this. It says, But he that said unto him, Thou art my son. In other words, God did not elevate himself to a position of a high priest. It, I mean, Jesus now, the Christ. It was God, the Father, who authorized him to function, to carry out that ministry. It says, Today I have begotten you. Verse 6. As he said also in another place. Now watch this. He says, Thou art what? A priest. How long? Forever. After the order of who? Remember we talked about that man Melchizedek. Right? Melchizedek was a priest of the Most High. Now the Bible says Jesus to the New Testament believer is a high priest and he functions in the order of Melchizedek. What was Melchizedek's function with Abraham? He received tithe and released the blessing. That was all he did. That was everything about his priestly office. He received tithe and released the blessings. He received tithe. So Christ in the office of Melchizedek, the moment you honor him with that designation portion, the same way Melchizedek blessed Abraham, he authorizes creation to start responding to you. The Bible says you are a priest forever. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? All that Melchizedek did because the Bible says he is after the order, meaning his function is in the similitude of Melchizedek. We never see Melchizedek doing anything except receiving God's designated portion and then activating the blessing on the giver. Christ himself awaits standing in the throne room for obedient believers. So the moment you bring his portion, he receives it as a high priest. Although you brought it to a church, although you gave it to a man of God, you are not sowing it. You are not doing favor. It's like you are answering a register and you stand before the throne and he receives it. And then he says, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And you come out and fortune start happening and people start working against you mysteriously but consistently. This is the mystery. Christ has become our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So a church that tithes takes God's designated portion and says, Lord, we know that in Nigeria there is struggle. People do not even honor churches. They don't honor men of God. They blackmail them. One little scandal and your ministry is dead. Lord, we do not want this devourer. This is your designated portion. And the high priest receives it. And he says, Koinonia, possess your territory. Possess the heavens and the earth. And you were sitting in your room and something started moving you. I won't come for Koinonia, but you found yourself here. It's called the blessing. It's a mysterious operation of the Holy Spirit. How many lives, watch this. How many lives are under the yoke of the bondage of corruption? Some of you seated looking at me right now. You can't wait for next week. Oh God, miracle service, my bailout. I'm giving you a key. I'm giving you a powerful key. Tithing has nothing to do with money. Tithing has everything to do with dominion. Tithing activates the operation of the blessing. So creation begins to respond to you. 
you may be small you may be illiterate but creation will respond to you doors will open on their own volition men will run over themselves to favor you while you will get into the same challenge that somebody is getting into a helper will come and take you out and leave the other person there because God's portion has been given listen there was a time in my life I was born again but I was not consistent with tithing and I can tell you it was hell on earth hallelujah when we started koinonia by the grace of God we have been joyously and happy it does not matter what offering or collection happens in this ministry God's portion must be returned to him before anything is done I don't care what the money is for God's designated portion that is the reason why we will only keep going from glory to glory because everything within our territory supports us the national union of road transport workers asks the protocol they love us with all their heart the mopol and the ministry uh, and, and the military the, i mean we we have access to all their officers just like that almost every one officer that has found himself working here has either been promoted or relocated mysteriously because when you come under a covering that is faithful you can tap into that law of exemption are you getting what i'm saying now i taught my mother this principle i said mommy if you never do anything please be faithful in time there was a time my mother said she wanted to start selling logs of firewood i said my mother is it that bad but today every devil in hell every devil including the ones that will be manufactured now if there are any they know that my mother is blessed ask every foul spirit in zaria i say it with confidence not by boasting but that these principles are irrefutable it will happen for students it will happen for married people it will happen for business people god's designated portion the key to activating the blessing from titan is consistency 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 when the Lord honors you with one million and you look at ten percent hundred thousand ah say hell no this is too much ah, ah. how can I bring hundred thousand bring it to koinonia who are you you think we're idiots we just walk monkeys walking baboon is chopping and you watch watch ignorant people educate you in newspapers watch ignorant people who do not know god lambast pastors and put things about tithing the devil is using them they write articles that mock people and when you read it it responds to your greed and you say yes this journalist is wise they now say let's calculate if everybody in koinonia brings ten thousand tight ten thousand times five thousand or four thousand he said abba is supposed to not reach you see let me tell you something my blessing my dominion is not tied to koinonia my dominion is tied to my own personal title my own blessing i say it with all humility by the grace of god i fear god you can ask him i have not failed from the time i made up my mind I am always faithful in my title. The moment God blesses me, the first thing is, Lord, your designated portion. Not, I beg, take Jare, let this cause live. No, with joy and honor, it gives me pleasure. That's why my life will keep remaining a mystery. You can only talk about it and maybe criticize it, but there's nothing stoppable about it. Uh -uh. There is an ancient mystery. This ministry you see is sitting upon a foundation that is unshakable and immovable many of you just got to hear yesterday or today that we change venue i say this with all humility how many ministries can afford that thing to just change venue you know you are coming to meet empty chairs but it doesn't matter where we meet 
there is a spiritual factor. I'm teaching you because it's not a reserve for koinonia. It's your heritage. So it's not the location of the business or the church that is making it fail. Believe me, creation is fighting you. People were standing under the rain. There are people standing under the rain. Do you think these people standing are idiots? Some of these people are noble men. Some of them are family men. Do you know what it means for a young man? We are talking of young people to just come and stand like a zombie for hours. Haba people. The only time you do that is when you are collecting your scholarship. Because you know there is a reward. So you say myself endure. Let's stand. It's a secret to sweatless dominion. You stand. I pray that God will make you see this mystery. Many of you are not faithful in tithing. You can start and then you just say, Kai. You bath whether it's convenient or not. Because you are aware of the consequences of not bathing. Sometimes you will need to drag yourself to the bathroom. And while you are murmuring, your body will say, bath and be healthy or don't bath and die. And then you have to choose. God is setting before you. It is not about witches and wizards. It is not about principalities and powers. It's about engaging the mysterious law that men have used from grace, from what, what they call it, from grass to grace. It has taken men from nothing. People have slept by the wayside. You listen to a woman called Jemima Mbaya. Many of you have heard her teachings. This woman used to sleep on the road in Joss. She used to use a carton. But today she has become a voice. There was once upon a time this ministry. A few people were here. We used to meet on the floor just like this. Not even mad. But see what the Lord has done. Let me tell you. There is no situation in your life that is new. You can argue it and look at it or get angry tonight and say, this is it. I found the key. This is it. I found the key. Ah, tight your way out of misery. The, the yoke of bondage is too much. It will kill you. Tight your way out. Churches, tight your way out of financial hardship. Tight your way out of suffering and hardship and misery. Stop authorizing Satan. My children and my generation, by the grace of God, will remain blessed forever. God knows. Not just because I'm a minister. Imagine how blessed my children will be. I have secured their future. You would think it's because I'm in the position that I am. But it's a mystery. From birth till they go to be with Christ, they will walk in the blessing. Listen, look at me. Some of you were born in families where nobody believed in you. Right now, as you are seated here, you are the only hope of your family. Exempt yourself. Exempt yourself. Tonight, exempt yourself. We are going to take the communion. And the communion will do two things. Number one, the communion will advocate because it's the mystery of the blood. Because many of us right now, the bondage of corruption is upon you. You know it. You can fake it. Listen, let me tell you. When everything is not working in your life, there is a cause. Not the cause in your village. Creation is fighting you. I met a young man who said he was getting ready to marry. I said, how much is your budget? He said, 3.5 million. I said, how much do you receive a salary? He said, 30,000. I said, tie yourself to the altar. Otherwise, die there with 20, 20,000 per month. Tie your way to the altar if you are really interested in marriage. Please don't joke with what I'm saying. I was thinking about this all the while. While we were coming, this was all that I was thinking about. I said, Lord, will you help your people to understand tonight? I have seen people in this ministry. I have seen people that I know who will not be able to buy yogurt of 100 naira. I have watched them tight themselves to practical dominion. 
don't think everybody seated here is broke and suffering let me tell you sincerely not everybody is under this cause of creation there are people who are at peace with creation Hallelujah. something mysterious happened today I made an order of something to come in and then um, the head of protocol went to get it for me and while we were coming someone called me and said are you this and that and that say yes I said um, I just saw you and I found out that we are from the same place he said the order that you made have they sent it I said yes he said wow I have already sent another one of that order to come in again you call it luck I call it the mystery of exemption exemption listen listen I, I want you to understand this. This is very powerful. That's why you hear people like Bishop Oyedeko. They may make some statements that look like they are bragging. A thief came. I think it was a thief or something. I heard the story that he came to live in faith. He was standing outside just like this and he fell down and died. Nobody prayed. No police. A, the earth fought him to his death. There are some people that are untouchable. You just see, try to touch them. And you see what will happen. Everything will fight you. From your clothes to creation. To the car that is carrying you. You see them ordinary. But those with them. Creation is for them. You, The more you criticize. The more they rise. It looks like they, nothing can be done. There is an ancient mystery. Bring God's designated portion. And reign in absolute dominion. I tell you this. Even if we decide to hold Koinonia in Gaskia, the exact thing will happen. Ask those who we went to minister in Funab. I don't think they have ever seen that kind of overflow. A gigantic auditorium. I think we'll show the workers during retreat. The same way it happens in Koinonia. It was powerful. They almost tore my clothes yesterday. I returned with seeds upon seeds. The hampers, the bags that they brought gift in. They had to stop us at the airport to transfer it into something. I've not even opened it to see what is there. There are some of you tonight, you came with seeds to sow. Do you know why? Because when you bless me, it will come on you. It, see, this, this thing, is, this thing is, is almost like Ojoro. You become so blessed, people have to use you as a ladder to climb. But many of us have been cheated. Welfare, please bring the communion quickly. Many of us have been cheated. Hear me. As you are seated right now, there are many of us, everything is fighting you. Your family is fighting you. Your academics is fighting you. Your relationship is fighting you. Every door seems to close. Exempt yourself. We are first going to plead for mercy. Because these principalities is not the issue of prayer to say I cast you. Please. Gentlemen, sorry, you have to make a little sacrifice right now. Please do not be offended. Everybody will participate in the communion. No, don't worry. I think you can stay. Hallelujah. As you partake of this communion, listen, this is a communion unto an empowerment to start tithing. It's a communion that will supply strength to your spirit man it says for this cause many are weak many are weak many are limited for this cause many become sick mysterious sickness fibroids growing out of nowhere and for this cause many die Psalms 82 verse 5 Psalms 82 verse 5 When you are not a tither There is nothing you do that will work If it is working now You are only seeing a mirage I guarantee you in the name of the Lord A shock is about to come Your only scriptural exemption Is your tithe God's portion God's portion many of you saw Titus coming 
and then when you saw Titus coming you were just looking at them my tithe belongs to God no matter what happens I cannot touch my tithe even if the world is going places it is God's portion it is a matter of life and death his designated portion bring ye all the tithes koinonia bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse and prove me I vow to you no matter where you are tithe your way out of trouble tithe your way to the top the Bible says they know not neither will they understand as a result they walk in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Listen, this is one of the most powerful messages you would have received this year. Whether you are a director, whether you are on a job, I don't care what you do. If you are not a tighter, you have signed up with struggle forever. Every time you refuse to tithe, you have not only destroyed yourself, you have destroyed your children's destiny. How can I be so wicked as a father to allow my children come up? You can, you can have rema. You can be a prayer warrior. You can be whatever. If you are not faithful, the tithe, you are not faithful in tithing. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. This is a night of destiny. Lift your voice in one minute. Cry passionately to God. And say, Lord, thank you for bailing me out. Go ahead and pray. Thank you for bailing me out. Thank you for bailing me out. There is a bondage of corruption. There is a cause of hardship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lift your voice and say, Lord, as I partake of this communion, supernatural grace to never fail in my tithing. Now I see that there is a high priest waiting for me, waiting for my business, waiting for my church. There is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek that receives of my tithe and releases and activates the blessing. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying inside and outside? Communion is not something to eat when you are hungry. There is a mystery. The blood tonight will cry mercy. It will cry out to the earth. Cry out to creation. Mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. That's what the communion is for tonight. Mercy for your shortcomings. Grace for consistency. Hallelujah. Now look at me. The Bible says not to partake of the communion unworthily. Because although this may be wine and bread but I want you to understand that in the spirit the moment the power of God comes upon it it is the mystery of the very body and the flesh of the Christ and the Bible says partaking of it unworthily can cost you even your life you are here right now you have not given your heart to the Lord or you have found yourself derailing the ways of the Lord lift your voice in one minute and say Lord 
I make my ways right according to the ordinances of the scripture. Let me not partake of the communion unworthily. Lord, I cry for mercy. Please pray. I know you, you take communion all the time. But I tell you, this is a communion with a difference. We don't do religious things here. We do things out of revelation. Heaven and earth are you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Hallelujah. Now, in one minute before we direct you on how to do, I'd like you to mention all the things that you know are fighting you and declare that by the mystery of this communion, the blessing comes upon your life. Lift your voice and pray. Come on, you're not praying, Koinonia. Mean business with this. Is it your finances? Pray. Is it your health? Is it your job? Is it marriage? Relationship? I engage the mystery that brings the blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, you left your ordinance with the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands upon this communion set. I release the power of God upon it. It loses its earthly significance as an ordinary drink, an ordinary wine. And I declare that it takes on a heavenly significance. Lord, let there be deliverances as people partake of this. Let there be healings. Many of you, as you take this, there will be instant miracles, instant breakthroughs. Chains will fall off your life. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to do it this way. If you have a seat, please sit down. All those who have seats, please sit down. Please do that quickly. Let's save time. We are going to start with all those standing. Just pick the bread, pick the cup, and then drop it here. And then, please, I think the rain may have. I, don't, I think it has reduced a bit. So, those who take up this, you are coming back in. But please, the moment you take it, you can just give space so that we'll do that and then we'll coordinate very quick the worship team you will guide us through powerful sessions of worship hallelujah praise the lord father we bless this in the name of jesus go ahead lord we give you praise those seated be praying in tongues lift your voice and be praying hallelujah all right direct them you can begin to come now in the name of jesus it is blessed please open it and let them partake of it Begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. The mystery of the body. The mystery of the body. There is an anointing upon what you are taking. It's not a ritual. Shaka paka ta prata gada bala da bo. Raka ta praka ta gada bakori ala ba. Those of us seated, make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Lord, this is the end of this captivity. Every manifestation of darkness that has stopped me from being a tighter and kept me in bondage, I cause it in the name of Jesus. Please make it snappy. Make it snappy. Make it snappy. 
la cata pra cata la cota sota pra cata bana da boca The angels bow before you You're beautiful You're beautiful Heaven and earth adore you Angels bow before you You're beautiful You're beautiful You're beautiful You're beautiful You're beautiful. Please, as fast as you can, as fast as you can, make it snappy so that we save time. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful, yeah. you're beautiful. Heaven and earth adore you. encourage those going outside if you can accelerate your, your movement please those coming let's let's make it snappy there are already so many people outside and we have to hurry up Oh, we discern the Lord's body tonight.
is telling me that from this communion tonight is going to be rolling away the reproach of many people many people that's what the Lord is telling me that the age-long reproach of many people will be rolled mysteriously God has shown you the key the key the key to getting your life and your destiny back he's shown you the key that one key that's what will open you to a mysterious dimension of wealth hallelujah you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your you are mighty on your throne. 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 You are mighty on your throne.
five minutes we are going to blast in tongues and you are going to speak that every force that has authorized creation to fight you that has brought misfortune I like you to say the blood speaks help those under the anointing there please hold hands together and let's begin to pray those outside make sure you are holding hands and let's pray in tongues it's the season of the rain please help those under the anointing as you pray the power of God is going to be setting people free as we pray the blood is speaking the blood is speaking Challenging the devourer, challenging the devourer, challenging the forces of darkness. Rakata pakata lakate, shakata prakata lebos. Embroto koto pekete pekete. Rakata bala raba 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 raba. Raba kata praga raba raba. Don't stop. Don't stop. Blasting tongues. For breakthroughs, oh God. For breakthroughs, oh God. Dominion over creation. Dominion over circumstances. Dominion over situations. Financial dominion, marital dominion, dominion over territories, dominion over environments. Let's 
em prokotos kata rekete kete le pokosopas man pratas kata alka parata sete eskete kete kete be kete prokoto bala ramos man prasa kata la mos em prokotos kotos kata shekete tete tete le kete tete kata bala raba rakata tata bakata bala raba la mos prata tapa koto prekete Lekete kete kete protosopa Rakata tata tapata Rekete te kete leketos Em protos kotos Malakata tapa Pratos kata latipa Bre lekete leketa It must change It must change It must change Insist It must change It must change Rakata la kata rakatos, rabata kata praga da bana da bos, makapras kata parekete, enkratete enkrates, elakate lakotos, makapras kata likete, rekete te 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 praga da bana da bos, makapratos kotos. Come on, press, don't be tired, don't be tired. La prata kata la bos, makata tata, manda prata skate, lekete te. We are engaging mysteries. We are engaging mysteries. Mysteries of power. Mysteries of dominion. Rapa bakata balada ba. La kata kata proskotos. Em protos oto palagade. Skaparada ba balaba nobo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a season of the rain. Rain does not just fall. Let me tell you something. As you commit yourself to returning God's portion, never make anything steal away your passion for tithing. No matter what it is. As God blesses you, whether in your life, in your church, in your business, be consistent regardless of what you are seeing and you will activate an ancient law. You will activate a mystery. Melchizedek, the high priest, Christ, receives of your tithe and pronounces upon you and the earth, hearing his voice, will start walking with you. Everything in creation the stars will fight for you. The earth will speak for you. Men will speak for you. It's not luck. It's not luck. It's a mystery. It's not luck. It's a predictable mystery. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and I pray for you. The communion tonight speaks of mercy and grace. Mercy advocating for the legal access the devil has had. You have needlessly suffered the bondage of corruption because you have refused to exempt yourself. You have robbed God and so the curse is wounding you bad. But tonight, in the name that is above all names, the Bible says they overcome them. I command every devourer over anyone's life anyone's business anyone's academics anyone's marriage anyone's family here in the name that is above all names by the overcoming power of the blood we cause the devourer now in the name of jesus christ i command every principality i speak to every spirit in high places that you let God's people go free now. I declare grace like never before to be a faithful title. Receive it now. Grace to always appear before your Melchizedek, the high priest, with your designated portion, thereby activating the blessing. 
There is a part two of this teaching. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't miss miracle service. Next, next week, Friday will be fire. I will show you the, the mystery behind the operation of the blessing. Hallelujah. There is another mystery I'll be sharing with you next week. But I pray for you. As you go and teach your congregations, as you teach your roommates, your fellow workers, your loved ones, I pray that this cause that is upon creation, let it be far from you and your household. In the name of Jesus. And therefore I speak to the earth. You hear the word of the Lord. Everywhere you see these ones, they are exempted from the cause. They are exempted from the cause of misfortune. They are exempted from the cause of failure. They are exempted from the cause of bad luck. I release upon you the blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Suddenly, you will walk out of this place and you can't tell what will start happening. Suddenly, calls that would not have come. The moment it begins to happen, know that an ancient secret, suddenly, your business that has closed, people say, open it for our sake. Open it for our sake. Suddenly, the helpers of destiny that have always been there, but a law has prohibited them, will now be released into your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that for every family represented that will begin to faithfully bring before the high priest God's portion I'm declaring that the blessing begins to go to every home every nook and cranny of your activity for those that are students I declare that the mystery of success that 10 times better anointing let it be activated in your life right now there are some of you you don't receive support from home nobody supports you you are literally on your own there is a way out you don't need to know anybody on he said no we no man under the in the flesh don't let anybody fool you that you must know somebody if you know this law this one thing is needful you will watch strangers come to feed your flock you will watch your gates continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles I want you to test God I want you to prove him and let God beat you to your imagination I don't care what you studied in school I don't care who you know or who you don't know an ancient mystery that has been responsible for fearful levels of dominion father let there be remarkable testimonies beginning from today oh god may your people never default in bringing you the portion that is yours in the name of jesus christ whenever your faith wants to fail you in tithing may there be a fresh supply from the throne in the name of jesus christ whenever your circumstance wants to make you look like you are wasting your time always remember melchizedek my high priest is waiting when you are in trouble that's not the time to eat your tight that's the time to faithfully go before your high priest and let that consistent proclamation of the blessing bail you out of any trouble lift your hands and give god praise hallelujah next week is our miracle service for the month of july It's the seventh month please invite all your friends and everybody the venue will be at cgc it's going to be an an amazing time of impartations and exposition of mysteries and breakthroughs god is going to be bringing people into their testimonies please 
invite your loved ones invite everyone that you can bring because your life will never be the same now if you're worshiping with us this is your first time I want you to know that God brought you he brought you here to change your life please make your way to the front right now all first timers we honor you no matter how far you're welcome make your way to the front the Lord himself brought you to change your story sit back koinonia celebrate them appreciate them as they come see what the Lord is doing bringing them adding to us every day and every week hallelujah praise the lord can we appreciate all these people standing before us give them a big 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 koinonia welcome hallelujah thank you so so much for making our time to come this is koinonia it's our meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We meet every Fridays. Our venue is CGC. This is a special arrangement. This is not our regular venue. And next week is our miracle service. Please be there. Come and come again. Invite your loved ones. I want you to know that we are anointed people and when we bless you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. We want to pray a prayer and release an anointing upon your life that will turn things around in a way that you have never seen. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and begin to bless them. We proclaim the blessing of this house upon you. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with passion for spiritual things. We bless you with an anointing. You go and begin to succeed. You go and begin to excel. We declare that your passion for God will rise above everything you have known. No more limitations in your life. We speak over your life. We activate the mysteries of the kingdom over your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming to worship with us. Now, I'd like you to follow um, the gentlemen and ladies waving their hands. They will welcome you more warmly on our behalf and give you a few details and then you'll be back. God bless you. Please celebrate them, Koinonia, this way. Gentlemen and ladies, God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate kato kate branda kata pako tosko tobre kate kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.